Seahawks fans, I'm going to challenge you with something. I want to get to 22,000 subs by midnight tonight. So I don't care when you come across this video. All I want you to do is look underneath the video, and if you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, what the hell are you waiting for? You're not going to find another channel that keeps you more up to date on the latest news, rumors, and the regular seasons right around the corner. So let's get to 22,000 subs by midnight tonight. We only need 75 more. You're watching Seahawks today. Mitchell Rents from Chat Sports, ready to walk you guys through the latest news and rumors. And I actually got quite a bit of injury updates around some pretty key players for this offense. The first dude that I'm going to be talking about on today's show is one of the most underappreciated wide receivers in the National Football League. That's Tyler Lockett. Now, for those of you that maybe do not know, maybe you don't watch this show often, Lockett has been dealing with a little bit of a groin injury. Anytime you see a soft tissue injury at this point of the season, you you definitely get a little bit worried but here's the good news the Seahawks they're going to be careful with him and it's one of the biggest reasons why he's been working on the sidelines over the past three four practices for the Seahawks now when you talk about the 28 year old out of Kansas State I'll say that he's coming off the best year of his five or actually what six year career now at this point 100 grabs 1054 yards 10 touchdowns last season in Seattle but when you talk about when he first came out of 2015 one of the things that he was great at was that straight line speed he also had some special teams ability what's made Tyler Lockett take that next step is he's improved his route running, but he's also improved his chemistry with Russell Wilson and he's taken his game, I'll say evaluation to the next level where Russell is back there scrambling, he's looking for a wide open guy and all of a sudden, bang, there's Tyler Lockett. That's where he's been able to take that next step. So here's the question I'm going to ask you because this is what Chat Sports is about. We ask questions. Don't get me wrong. I love talking sports. It's literally <laughs> my job, but I also want you guys to go down and interact with me because if I'm sitting up here talking to myself, I just seem like that crazy psychopath on the side of the street asking for money. I don't want to be that guy. So how worried are you about Tyler Locke? And I want you to go from a scale from zero to ten. Zero being you're not worried at all. Ten, you're pulling your hair out. For me, I'm going to go ahead and say it's a three at this point. And the only reason why I'm going to say it's a three is because he's Tyler Lockett. Do I think that he's going to play in this preseason game upcoming? Probably not. Do I think that he's going to be ready for week one? Yes. Yes, I do. Until I see a report, until I see a story that has any other information than that, it's going to be less than a five out of ten. Though, when you see soft tissue injuries starting to pile up at training camp, it is something to be at least a little bit nervous about. So this is kind of good news coming up here on the show. It's going to be around Colby Parkinson, and he has been having his foot evaluated. There was a report last week that he could miss substantial time. Well, apparently the foot injury isn't as bad as what originally was feared, so he's not going to require surgery. As soon as you see a report that says he's not going to require surgery, you can just take all that sweat that's been resting on your forehead and then just get rid of it. So Pete Carroll said that he should be back in a couple of weeks. I don't know exactly what a couple of weeks is when I think of a couple. Maybe I'm crazy. I think of two. If you're a couple person and you think of three, well, then I know how you really like to get down. But one of the ways that the Seattle Seahawks wanted to be able to use this guy in the offense, in the red zone. He's just a gigantic human being. 6'7", 251 pound, 22 years old, coming out of Stanford. Two catches and 16 yards last year. But when you talk about the Seahawks team, how can they get extra tight ends? Sure, you got Will Disley. Yes, you added Gerald Everett this offseason. But Seattle wants to be able to use Parkinson in the red zone. Now, in terms of the overall injury. Here's what a Seahawks beat writer had to say on Colby. Uh, Colby Parkinson is out for an extended stretch with a broken foot. Same spot he injured last summer. Big hit for Seattle's depth at what was a position of strength. Parkinson was a breakout player the first two weeks of training camp. So this was definitely a guy that I talked about multiple times on the show as being a breakout as well, which is why I want to be able to keep you guys updated here. But as I alluded to earlier, it said couple of weeks. I don't know what a couple of weeks is. So will Parkinson be ready for week one of the NFL season? I want you to go down to the comments right now and type that Y for yes, or I want you to go ahead and type N for no. 
The reason why my guess is going to be no is because if he's going to be dealing with an injury, the regular season's basically three weeks away. And the fact that they want to be able to use him down the stretch, let's face it, this is a Seahawks team that doesn't have just week one aspirations. They don't have week two aspirations. This is a team that believes that they are good enough, and I do too, that they are going to make the playoff. And as long as you have Russell Wilson slinging the rock, you also are a contender at winning a Super Bowl. So they're going to go long-term option. They're going to rest Parkinson until he's 100% healthy. For that reason, I actually don't think he's going to be ready to go week one. Now, if you guys are ready to go for week one, listen up right now. I can't wait for regular season football, but I also am a degenerate when it comes to betting. So, if you guys want to go ahead and bet on preseason games, if you want to go ahead and bet on regular season games, maybe you want to bet on Russell Wilson winning the MVP, you can do all of that. But what I want you to do is listen to this deal I got going on for you. It's the best deal on the internet. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code Seahawks125, you're going to be able to get 125% deposit bonus. For those of you that struggled in math, I'll be the first one to say my SAT scores were terrible. But if you deposit $100, you actually get $125 for free to bet with. Put it down a $5 bet this week, maybe against the Broncos Seahawks game, and you can go ahead and get some extra money. The reason why I literally say that like you guys have nothing to lose is because if you listen to me and go to chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code Seahawks125, we're literally going to give you $125 for free to bet with if you deposit $100. You want to be a big baller? You want to whip out the big cojones? Put down $500 and get $625 for free. Now, don't get mad at me, all right? Like, I know this is a Seahawks channel, but my job is also to be able to make you guys some money. So I'm going to go ahead and say bet on the Broncos to cover this one. They're five-point favorites. The over-under in this one is about 37 points. The reason why I'm going to bet on the Broncos is because they're going to play Drew Locke and they're going to play Teddy Bridgewater. Anytime you're going to get starting quarterbacks out there, go ahead and play them. If this was the regular season game, of course I'd be betting on the Seattle Seahawks. In terms of the over, I'm also actually going to bet the over. Now, usually in preseason games, like last week in the Raiders game, I told everyone, bet on the under. Why? A lot of backup quarterbacks. Right now, Denver has a quarterback battle going on between Locke and Bridgewater, which means those two guys, they're going to be out on the field. They dropped 33 points on the Vikings. I don't anticipate another 33-point performance, but I anticipate a lot more points scored, and I anticipate more points scored also for Seattle. So go ahead, make some money, chatsports.com slash bet. Next story coming up here is around Dwayne Eskridge. And what's the rookie doing? How's he feeling? Hopefully he's ready to go. Activated off the pup list after missing three weeks with a toe injury. Very, very good news here. So Seattle, if you all remember, they didn't have a first round pick of this past year's draft. So technically their first pick was 56 overall which was Dwayne Eskridge. Now, anytime you're going to pick somebody that early or he's going to be your first pick, you have plans for him to be able to be in your starting roster. When Seattle said goodbye to David Moore, they said, how can we replace, how can we get a wide receiver three? This team wants Eskridge to be that wide receiver three, at least I personally believe so. So he practiced for the first time on Tuesday. That's a good sign. He practiced today as well. But at 5'8", 190 pounds, a little bit undersized, you want to be able to have him still keep that burst, still be able to keep those cuts and that solid route running ability. And at last season at Western Michigan, he had 33 grabs, 768 yards, 8 touchdowns. But the number that really is just jaw-dropping to me, I don't care where you play in college football, if you're putting up 23.3 yards per catch, that's pretty damn impressive to me. So right now when you look at the Seahawks wide receiver depth chart, nobody's going to take over Metcalf and Lockett. It's the best wide receiver duo in the league. If you disagree with me, you can find me on Instagram at MitchellRent365. And then you insert Dwayne Eskridge in there. You're hoping that he can probably get maybe around 50 targets. So here's the question I'm going to ask you guys. Over or under 50 targets for Eskridge this season? And the reason why I picked the number 50, last year David Moore, 47 grabs. 47 divided by 16, it's basically about three. So you add an extra three grabs to the 47, and now you're at 50. Look at me, I'm a math major. So O for over, U for under, 50 targets for Eskridge this upcoming season. The last thing we're going to round out here is Rashad Penny. Believe it or not, he's healthy. I know, it's kind of a crazy thing to be able to say because literally since this guy came out of San Diego State, he's been a, a headache to say the least. And I hate to say I told you so, but... Told you so. But it is good news that Rashad Penny also back on 
the practice field. Not sure if he's going to be able to play this upcoming week simply because they're going to rest a lot of their players. You saw a lot of guys like Collins, DJ, Dallas was also a mainstay in last season as well. So when you look at the Seahawks running back depth chart, I actually made a boo-boo when I was making this bad boy and I forgot DJ Dallas' name. So that's, that's on me. But I don't anticipate to see a lot of Rashad Penny simply because of some of those injuries. Even with Chris Carson's injury history, you want to be able to have more running backs in the backfield. Now, this is what Penny has done his first three years and his only three years in the NFL. Obviously, when you draft somebody in round one, especially at the running back position, you are hoping for a little bit more. Now, if I'm looking at a glass half full, if Penny would have played, I don't know, maybe more than Chris Carson might not have been able to shine. But at the end of the day, you still want to be able to see Rashad Penny out there healthy because you need extra running back depth, especially with a team that even though I think all of us want to see Russ cook, and I and the, the more Russ wants to cook, the better in my opinion. But if Penny's healthy, that also helps Chris Carson, and that helps this team make a longer and probably more effective playoff run.